Hi guys, how are you today? I am turning off my ringer because I realized I forgot to do that really quick. I, however, do not have Rocky on my phone, so it probably won't be as much fun to play. Anyways, okay, set that aside. How is everybody doing today? I see Glenn and Alice and Thelma and Irene and Mary R. And it looks like I've got the group. Hello, guys. Alice, hi. I hope you're having a good week. Mary R., I'm glad to see you this week. Hope things are better. I don't know. It, I don't know that I heard. So I hope that you're having a better week. That's my hope for you. So my love goes out. Okay, so we have got some cute, cute, cute cards today. You ready? I'm ready. Susan's ready. Yay. Hi, everyone. Hi, Susan. I forgot Hi. to say hello. There you go. <laughs> Those are our two brown, brown and black looking. It's a really a dark chocolate with just a tiny bit of black around the border edges. And so it they blend in very well to look great with that black and brown section. So those are the those two. And we are going to try and get through uh, five cards. Can't guarantee it. So I'm going to start where I can with the card that will be the hardest and then hopefully we'll zip through from there. There you go. And here's our little dachshund. Little dachshund puppy. And so those are the five cards. And then from here, I'm going to show you what your kit looks like. Pardon my reach. As we've discussed, I am much slower at things than everybody else is at putting things on. So I have already pre-cut all of my pieces um, so that it will make it easier, but I will give you all the measurements and we'll go through the process together. Okay. So in your kit, you will have red and black ribbon, a little tiny, well, it's not really tiny, but it's a smaller piece of our uh, velveteen uh, in a mocha color from SEI. We've got our foam squares. We've got these. These were new a couple weeks ago in the store, and they're rolls of little gemstones. I don't know where I'm going with this. Okay, there we go. Um, they're little tiny gemstones, but they work great and it's all on a roll. So you get a whole bunch of them. Oh, here we go, right here. So it has been really great that these are back in stock and we have them. Okay, so this is the Muddy Paws No Bones About It kit. And this is our topper set. And here is one of our cardstock papers. Um, this one is the non-foil one. This is our foiled one. And it's got little foiled hearts and no, no, uh, there's a little dot in some of the hearts that make them look like they're foiled, but it's actually just the, the paws that are foiled. Little bones all the way around it. And then you have your cards that we're making. So we've got three A6s and some envelopes and a five by five and a DL. And then three pieces of gold mirror. Okay. So let me move the envelopes up and out of the way. Okay, there we go. 
All right. Hopefully some of you were able to get your kits. I'm not positive because we had them up and ready, I believe on Sunday. So, hey, it was fast turnaround as far as I'm concerned, because I said on Thursday, do you need me to help with the next Thursday? Because there's a lot of taxes that are going on around here. And she said, yes. And so I worked on them on Friday and ran them in on Saturday. <laughs> so hopefully we will be able to have everything that we need and that you got yours. All right. So first things first, I'm we're gonna cut out all of our pieces that we need. And the reason for that is just making sure that we're gonna have enough left over for our, for each one of the cards in the right places. So the first one that we're going to do is the, the little Chihuahua, okay? So he was cut out of this corner sideways like this. And then the other one was cut right in here like this. And that one is, so this one is a five by five cut and um, that is the main cut that you have to do for this one. Everything else is already provided in the slips. So um, this is in your topper frame, topper frame, topper frame. And then in this one, other one, uh, it's got your Miri card that we're going to put on. Um, and then your chocolate gets cut out of right here. And it is five and a quarter by three and three quarters. Okay. And so we will go ahead and we'll cut these right now out of these two corners. It looks like we're really blurry again in the, in one of the screens. Okay. Hopefully, does it, does it get, um, blurry for you guys? I know sometimes it does. If you see that it's blurry, just give Bryce a heads up and and we'll try and catch it as we go. So you refresh that one. Just hit refresh and it will unblur it for whatever reason, I don't know. There you go. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> Hi, Susan. Not you, Susan. Okay. New, different Susan. <laughs> they said that it's blurry. Okay, so here's where we cut from. Right here, five by five, and right here, uh, five and a quarter by three and three quarters. And the rest, we're just going to take and cut out. You can use it from here if you want. So you would have all of the rest of this as extra to do something else with. So this is where I would cut your last piece out of. And that last little piece is a, um, it's a two by two two, I believe. Two by two. We'll double check it as we go. Okay, so that's cutting for this one. And then our next one is the one that's going to take a little bit more work. And the reason for that is, is that with these three cards, everything just kind of fits right into place. So there we go. All right, so First little card goes from here to here at the very bottom, and that's what makes this card. It's just your D DL, so you can either cut it at the DL size if you would like, and the DL size for us is eight and a quarter by three and seven eighths. So eight and a quarter by three and seven eighths for this floral piece right back here. Oh, so that. right here. Eight and a quarter by put it on again. Put eight and back. a quarter by three and seven eighths. Eight and a quarter. Mm-hmm. From there to there, eight and a quarter. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you'll just cut off a little tiny bit of the flowers in the very little corner on and a little bit of the red. It will be just right here from this end to this end. 
So you can either put it on with your double-sided sticky tape and cut them out, or you can be like me who can't cut straight and um, cut them out to this shape. And if you like that better, great. So you've got two opportunities to do it that way. Okay, so that's where that card gets cut from next. The next one gets cut from right up here. <laughs> yes, right up here. And that one has the mirror around it. So we're giving it about a, almost a quarter of an inch mirror border around the outside. And so for that one, we're cutting it uh, with the floral here and the red here. And that is three and a quarter right here. And the length is five and a half right here. So three and a quarter in the corner, five and a half. And you will need to cut that one because we can't just put it on. You can eyeball it if you want, but I have it set up at that, at that marking. Okay, the last piece is what you have left over and you just set that to the side because that's the one that we're gonna use first. And that's the reason why I wanted you to cut all the different shapes. So um, hopefully that will make some sense to you guys. Hi, Roberta, how are you? Um, so let's, I'm just going to run it again, just because I'm not doing all these cuts with you. So I want to give you as much time as I can to get those if you're working along. So this is eight and a quarter by three and seven eighths. We run from the floral corner way over here at the very bottom and just barely cut off a little bit of print up here. The next card that we do is our little birthday dogs. And I gave it enough space when I cut it to be able to measure it through and make it smaller or bigger. But I wanted to make sure that I had enough. So we have this one cut with the red and the floral and that's three and three quarters by five and a half. Okay, three and three quarters by five and a half. Okay, and then you will be left with this piece. So it, would be what you cut out right here. It would be our, it will be our last one. Okay, Susan, what, what, um, what shapes, what sizes do you need? Because if you are confused, that means that somebody else might also be confused. That goes with that one. Correct. And do you have I've your got, sizes? Do you feel this, comfortable? So have, what's this? Did you cut all the way through? What's this one? Well, that one's going to go on a different one, and we'll talk about where they go in just a minute. We're just cutting our okay. card stock ahead of time. So that one goes with that one. Yes. Bit. Yes. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll catch up. I'm just All right. fighting with my glue at the moment. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea if we'll be fighting with glue or not. That's a good point. We should double check that. Okay. Do you need a pin? Well, my pin won't go in it. Okay. Bryce, can down. you see if we've got another bottle handy? Actually, here's this one. Let's try. See if that works. Okay. All righty. So we are going to start with our piece with our leftover shape. So if we cut our DL shape and we cut our A6 shape out of this red and blue paper, this is what we should have left over if you laid them out the way that we laid them out okay so here is this piece okay so you're going to take your european a6 there, there they are they were hiding okay so we're going to start from here and we're going to take our European A6 and I want you to measure in at the top of your fold. So here's your fold. I'm going to measure in at the top 
and our inside is one and three quarters. So we're going to mark that at the one and three quarter mark so that we know to cut it right there at one and three quarters. Okay. And then we only want to cut down two and it's two and five eighths. So so at two and five eighths is how far we're going to go down. Um, I eyeballed it a little bit. Uh, so you may end up finding that you can get that two and five eighths down and let's see if that got far enough. Thank you. Right, I'll do this one at home. I think. I can't. Okay. So we have two and a half that I've cut so far. So we're going to go down just a tiny bit longer, right? Like that. Okay, so you should have an A6 that looks exactly like this. It should go two and five eighths down and it should go one and three quarters over. So right here, one and three quarters and cut down into the card to two and five eighths. Okay, there you go. All righty. So you do not want to put this on. You don't want to just take and put what we cut out on here. If you do, it will stick where you don't want it to stick. So we have to cut and, or I should say, we've just cut our space and now we need to bend it um, to where we want it to go. So the trick about sticker cards is that you're going and you're creating a taller fold in this section. So what I did was that I went up here and can I have the ruler back for just a second, Susan? Thank you. I measured down and my top, my bend where it was, then became way up here. So from the very bottom to where the new bend will be, it is four and three quarters. So you're going to make a new bend at four and three quarters. Okay, so I am going to just create a bend right where I put my dot. It does not have to be perfect. It really doesn't. Um, so long as you can make that happen, do not bend the rest of your card or else you will have a line. And you don't want that to happen. So you only want to really sink this line where it's supposed to be. You can use a bone folder. I highly recommend it. With your with your cutter, if you would if you would feel more comfortable with that, and then the next one that we do is we fold this down where we've cut. So you're going to have this bend way up here, and you're going to move your way down. So here is the top now. So here's our top. And we're going to move all the way down to where we cut here in this line. And we're going to take and just fold it at that line. So where it joins back together again, where you cut at the very base, you're going to take it and fold it. So it should look like this. Here's where I cut my line down to. And then I'm just taking and I'm folding this part. And again, don't fold this portion of your card or else you won't be able to do it. Uh, go in and down at the very bottom in. go go in and down fold it here yeah and make a line 
and then you will naturally be able to make your last line by closing it back up, holding it in place, and that last line will come in naturally because you're going to want to match it up with your main portion of your card. Okay? Does that make sense, Susan? Yes, perfect. Yes. So we now are meeting the edges down here at the bottom. So it's great. Okay, so from here, now that we know what our shape is going to look like for this portion of our card, we can now apply that right here. And you will notice that you've got extra, but I want the print. So I have put the print as far as I can make it happen. So that is what I cut. So you will be cutting down and into this. If you notice, it doesn't have tons of floral right here. It's just a small amount. So it's because I've taken my blue card and moved it all the way over. And now I only have a very small portion of the floral over here. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it and cut that out. Oh, I thought it did right now. Uh, Is it not sure if it's the other way around? Uh, flip it over is what I would say. Right. You can take the one that you had. Nope, that's for your four by six. Just take that and turn it over maybe. Flip it the other. There. there. Uh, I think you should go the other way. I think you'll be better off the other way. Okay. Other way going. <laughs> yeah. The good news is, is that so long as you have enough cardstock, you'll be able to make this. Whether you have the floral print on one side or the other does not really matter. So put on our tape. Susan is ahead of me for this part. Put on your tape. I'm not putting any tape on this part. Sorry guys, bottle in the way. I'm not taking any and putting any tape on my little stipper side here um, until I'm ready to put the paper actually on it. And we'll probably just save that till last little bit here. Part of the reason for that is, is because we need what's left over. A bigger mess than usual than usual I feel like probably because I have a bigger mess this time than I usually do I wanted to keep it out so that you could see those cuts there for a little bit I forgot to move them out of my way okay so Remember, I'm going to put this in. I need this part and this part, so I want it to line up. You can put it at the very tip top right here. I don't know if you can see that. So when I line it up, my lines, I want to line up here to here at the top. And then it will come out just about right so you see a peak of floral. And here's where I get the joy of doing something that I did wrong. Didn't line it up well enough, it looks like. Flip it on the inside to follow your card. And make sure that when you're cutting that you're just trying to cut so that you can salvage as much of that red and floral that's on the other side. Try not to overly cut or cut it off yet. 
because we don't know which parts we're going to end up needing to use. Okay, so here is where I made my beautiful mistake. So I am going to take, I've got plenty. I am going to take and put this over the top right here where it should have been. So I didn't let, I didn't make sure that that was lined up quite right when I put it on. So I'm taping it onto the back and then I'm just going to place it on and cut it because I think that I'll get a better a better angle at what I'm trying to do. Okay. There's that part of the card. I'm then going to take this portion of the card just like this. Let me move that up here. So I'm taking this portion, the red with the floral, and I have it right here. And we're basically going to create our own topper out of gold miri. And so we'll start that process now. So you have a piece of your gold miri, and let me measure it out. Can got it right here. Okay, so the gold is cut at three inches by three and a half. inches by three and a half. Okay, see that? I've now got my base. In my base, Take your, take your Mary, and three by three and a half. Three by three and a half. Okay, three by three and a half. So you're gonna take your long and it's gonna go upright like this. And you're gonna put your piece on top of it. Just put it in the middle. We're just going to cut each edge off just like that. Okay. And I'm going to hope that me taking a little bit of that jagged piece is not going to show. And if it does show, because I didn't line it up right, um, we'll just go ahead and figure out a way to fix the problem. Stickers for us, too. Possibly. Maybe. Okay. So you're going to take your piece. Looks like this. Here's your three by three and a half. You've got this piece that you've just put tape on the back of, and you're just going to plop it right on there. Okay, it's okay if it's above it. 
I now have lost all my measurements because I grabbed my gold notes. <laughs> so we were talking about how I grabbed Miri and put all my notes on the back of it because it's what I had handy for all my measurements. And we talked about being able to recycle it to reuse it on your your next card. So I apparently took in literally. Um, okay. <laughs> Fun. For your next trick. <laughs> Let's see how many times I can get through this. Okay, so we're going to take our little shepherd guy out. Little German shepherd with the little pink cap. Looks like a baseball cap. Yeah. And we're going to take out our heart border with the paws. Blue one. Blue one. Okay, so we've got the red at the bottom and the blue at the top. And we're going to put in our little German Shepherd right through here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to affix this portion of the border. I'm going to take that border piece. And it really becomes something that I pay attention to, but it might not matter for you. So it's okay if it doesn't. Um, that is, is that I wanted my hearts to go in. <laughs> and somebody might like the hearts to go out. So it may be that you like the in or the out. So you decide. And we're just going to have not a problem with fixing that little guy, huh? Yay! Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take my, my edge. And you may find that you want to have more of your red piece showing and not the flower piece. So you may not like the dog on the red part for the most, and you can see your floral you may want to turn it around and have your floral and your paws down there. So it really becomes what you want it to be. There's no right or wrong with this. Like I said, we're starting with the hardest card first because we're creating it. So, I mean, we're, we're really creating this card. We started with an A6. <laughs> so, so I knew that this would be a little bit trickier. Um, it's for the adventurous. <laughs> Can I go home now? <laughs> if it's not fun, you shouldn't do it. And that is okay, too. I definitely would have been in a place a couple years ago going, yep, I'm not doing that card, not yet. But this gives people that have done it for a little while something new and something that they can do. So I promise this is the hardest card of the day. All right. So we now have our gold Miri at the three inches by three and a half. And we've used the last little leftover strip of the floral and the red border corners. And we've taken the red heart and paws and just lined it up on each side, just like that. So now we've made and created our own little topper uh, frame piece, basically. So when you get these little guys that have lots of frames around them, right? Uh, that's great because it's made your picture bigger. That's the goal. Um, so when you get a whole bunch of these little guys, you have to figure out a way to make your card bigger. You have to figure out how to get that tag bigger as you go. So with that, you can grab your foam squares and just kind of decide where you would like your German Shepherd to sit. A good little puppy. Okay. 
so I did this card because I asked Bryce, which would he think that you guys would like to do? And he said, oh, the wiener dogs always went out, even over the pool that I was trying to sneak in there. He said, oh, no, 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 the, the wiener dog, that's it. So it still sat close to my heart because prior to our little dachshund poodle that we have now that's all black and looks exactly like the other Muddy Paws one that I think it's too busy. This one's no bones about it, but I think the other one says something is busy and it's got a little black poodle on it. So um, it reminds me of my puppy, but prior to having Olaf, um, we had a little dog and his name was Shorty and he was a dachshund and he had arrived at our friend's house. Um, I shouldn't say he arrived at our friend's house. He arrived by having them see him along the road um, on a really busy freeway uh, and they took him and they put him um, in, the, in the car and they took him home but they already had a dachshund at home and their dachshund was old. And they said, we, we don't want to make it hard for them. And so they made the decision to go ahead and, um, to go ahead and find a new home. So we said, we'll take him. He was a sweet puppy. He wanted to sit with us whenever we would come to visit. And so, we took him home. And at the time, uh, I ran preschool. And when I did preschool, we're going to take a border and put uh, we're going to take foam squares and put it on the back so that we're raising it up just a little bit as well. So we've got foam squares behind the shepherd and now underneath. So um, he was definitely a dachshund. He could be he was so smart and so sweet. And a lot of people said dachshunds aren't to be around children, but this dog loved hanging out with my babies and my preschoolers. And in fact, one of my babies, um, not a baby, and in fact, has far graduated from high school. <laughs> but one of my babies used to believe that uh, he was a stuffed animal and he would drag him wherever he went by the tail just like you would with a stuffed dog or a stuffed toy and he was crawling and he would literally crawl over and take shorty and shorty would bless his heart he would back up with his tail so that he could keep up with the little boy's crawls and he he had absolutely um he had absolutely a fun time and shorty was more than happy to accommodate him and we had other other little ones that loved him too they would use him as a pillow you name it he was always game and we used to joke that he was a mommy dog because he was he acted just like a mommy we would have a kitten at our house and he would baby that kitten we got a second little puppy and when we got our second little puppy uh he was born and or she was born and her mommy had some uh emergency issues and died during childbirth and so they had a litter of 16 puppies and those 16 puppies had to be hand fed every two hours and so we said that we would take them home and we would just set our alarm in between the two of us between my husband and I, we should be able to offer the every two hours. And then our kids were old enough. They were in high school. They were old enough to, uh, to have, um, they were old enough to be able to have, uh, show up at home after school and feed the puppies, feed the little puppy then. And they took my son, especially because he really wanted Penny. Penny was copper. She was a copper red bone coon hound. And um, she, she was copper. So we called her Penny. <laughs> 
Okay, so our last little bit is going to be used right here. Like this. Okay, so we're just going to take whatever was left over from our piece and we're going to plop it right in there. I have a little tiny bit of floral on this part. This, this happened due to making that mistake there with not moving it down. So that's okay. No biggie. But we are going to take it and we're going to strengthen it as well. So you want to take your, your piece that you've, your last little piece of rectangle that you have of the blue. We have used every little inch of this paper. You could, if you find that you need to change it up or that you're shy, you could always introduce some of your bones and paws from this because we do have a big piece of that left over. So I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to slide it in I'm going to slide it right into that that space so see where i'm going taking that and sliding it all the way in like that okay and then i'm just going to cut off the back edges so off comes the top where my tape was, so I guess I'm not going to be doing that. I had brought my scissors over, but I'm not seeing them. No, they're too, they're, they look like they're the same size, but for whatever reason, you know, you work with what you know, right? If you know something particular and this is something that you use on a regular basis, it seems natural and so much easier for me to get because I know how it bends and moves. And these are Debbie's, so I'll mess it up for her somehow if I try cutting with hers because it'll bend something guaranteed. Okay, so because I cut off the top that had the tape, I'm going to go ahead and just use a little bit of glue right in there on the very tip top. Okay. And then I'm going to take this border and part of the reason why we are taking this border and using it is because right here we have the original fold. And so the goal is to try and help strengthen it right along in that area so that you don't have a problem. So we're going to take and use just a little bit more of this border. And we're just going to strengthen that seam so that it doesn't try and fold down lower or bunch. For the most part, it's got good support with that big, long blue piece. But just in case, we're going to make sure that we've got what we need. So feel for the line. So long as you get a portion of the border on it, you can kind of feel right here. See? Mm, I don't know. There. Oh, there we go. Hits the light. There's our seam that we want to try and cover on the other side. So I'm going to hold my finger through here. So now I've got my thumb. Now I've got my thumb exactly where I need to put this so that I know that I'm strengthening it. And that's all there is to it. Now you can decide if you want to put something extra on here. Um, you may want to uh, see if you can fit a little bit more of the red down in here or make a heart, use some of your extra stickers. Um, if you didn't end up with a floral piece, and as you know, I didn't end up with a floral piece because I cut it wrong. But that's what we end up with along with our little stickers. 
which I have not officially seen yet. Do you have stickers in yours? No. no. I've got don't make bones about it, or that's all good. Yeah, but no extra stickers anywhere? No. Okay. I'm not seeing them either. I wonder if they got missed, which can happen. We were trying to make sure that Brittany had the opportunity to make them on Friday, and it kind of got thrown at her at the end of her day almost. Not quite the end, but close enough. And so I apologize. I think that we missed the stickers. So I'm so sorry. Um, and I will, if you haven't ordered your kit yet, I will go ahead and we'll make sure that they get in the rest of the kits this evening. Um, if you have had a kit, just send us an email and the next time that you order from us, we'll just drop in the stickers um, because they're owed to you. They were part of the kit. So um, that's what we have for this card. I didn't mind this one, but it still looks all right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let me see it. So this is Susan's. So she used the same cut technique, and she had it to where she had this part. Um, she cut off of the top or the bottom from the opposite direction. So this is just literally the opposite piece of what I cut down here she used up here. So you got to see a lot more of the red and the floral on hers. So that was a great way to go. Okay. Okie dokie. Yay, so me. this is our hardest one and the rest will be easy. Okay. Deep breath. Deep breath. Okay. So our next little guy, we're going to go ahead and stick with the colors, the, the floral and puppy red puppies right here. Okay. So we're going to get another one of our A6s. I just have to find it. Hey, here are the gold sheets of paper that I'm supposed to be using instead of my notes. Okay. So we have a piece of gold, Mary, and here's our A6s. I'm folding my fat into the middle of my card. That seam that's on the outside, it looks like a divot. So in case you didn't know this ahead of time, I'm sure that most of you already do, but just for those that are newer, um, that little seam that's right there, if, when you use it, you wanna fold your fat on the inside so you don't see it. So it seems counterintuitive to what you're seeing. So just, a little note about that. What? Yeah, Susan's right. Put the fat away. Okay, so we're just going to put our gold Mary right on the card. Do I need to move further over? Sorry, I'm shorter. <laughs> no, yes. into the same thing. You start at one area and pretty soon you guys are working literally right on the edge of the table. Oh, you mean forward? Yeah. Or, oh, okay. No, I fine. can move. I moved. Okay. So you go where it's comfortable. Okay. Well, I will slide all over the place if you let me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> One of those people. <laughs> I try and stay in the lines, but I'm not very good at it. Okay. Trim off any extra Miri. Okay. 
it really makes it hard because I'm left-handed. So when I'm left-handed and I'm, oh no, but this is why I slide. I start over here thinking I need my elbow space, but I forget it, no elbow space. So I have to stick within a little space in order to be able to work. So I think that I start pulling back and hitting this edge because I've got to keep it tighter than, yeah. Okay. That's my excuse, and that's what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so we've got our gold Miri piece, and we're going to add this one to it. Now, when I did it, I wanted to make sure that I had enough space to make this as big or as little around the edges as I wanted. And I had a different card at home than... Uh, was here. I When I was making these, I used it out of my own stock. And um, and Crafts Style is the A6s. I think they're called C6s? Um, they're called the C6. Uh, and what that is is the envelope size for the A6. Um, and so the one that I grabbed was just a little bit different. So I have a narrower card. So I wanted to make sure that when we cut these, we weren't, we weren't cutting it completely off. So you just want to figure out, do I want my border at top and bottom to be a little bit um, bigger? Or do I want the whole thing to have a little bit of an edge? And I really wanted it to have the gold because we don't have a, a frame. We just... That's it. So we're trying to make our card bigger, right? We're trying to give that little tiny tag its own little presence. So um, I always just kind of lay it out on my gold Mary, and then I kind of just check it and make a tiny little cut. So this is me not measuring. And then from there, I just run it on my Run that on my uh, cutter. Okay, and that comes out to three and five eighths by five and a half. So that's where we end up with on that. Okay, there we go. Now, what I did on this one was is I uh, put my put my foam squares on this to raise it up off of the gold. You don't have to if you like it close. Good night, Mary. I hope you feel better. It sounds like you're not feeling very good. Okay. And I obviously have missed some of the conversation. So, been thinking about you. Um, so with this, we're just going to use tape and you can put it down flat. I'm going to put this one down flat and you can see the difference and see what you decide. We try and do that. I think a lot of times yeah. we'll have made it and then we're like, well, hey, what would it look like if we did this? Because, you know, you can't make the same card twice. It's just never possible. <laughs> Okay, so here's my card. Make sure that it's opening the right direction because I'm doing it upside down. And you can use your tape flags in order to do that. I kind of wish that I maybe had because this side is a little bit wider, but it's, it is pretty close. Okay, so I'm going to take my little tag. This one definitely needs the foam squares. Make sure that it stands out.
You should see the mess that I make off the camera. It's pretty hilarious. Usually I'll check all my papers this direction, forward, you name it. And I'm just going to put her with her little flower right on it. Okay. We're going to take the gold Miri that's left over from our stipper card. So the base that we made on our stipper card right here. I'm taking that piece and I'm using the extra here. Don't cut into one of your other gold Mary pieces or else you will not have enough gold Mary. So that's, that's my clue for you. Okay, so from here we are going to take and wrong one. I'm not even measuring anything. I think it's one and a half. Yeah. So our little square that I made to just kind of give it that little bit of extra um, is one and a half by one and a half. It won't, if you don't cut it at the one and a half, um, It won't fit the little heart sticker inside. So one and a half by one and a half. Here's our little square. And I may find that I'm going to have to do something a little bit different because I am definitely in need of some extra blue with that extra that I used. So, do you have any extra blue left over there, Susan? Yay, you do, good, okay. So, just my blender. I don't think that I have any more blue in the mess that I've created, but that's okay, because remember I said we've got a lot more of this left. So I am just going to choose to use this little tiny bit right here. It's only an inch by an inch square that you need. So here's my inch. Of the yellow or the brown? Uh, use the blue. Oh. Use the blue. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not. An inch by an inch. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're just basically filling up your spaces because they're little tiny tags. So we're just gonna make our own tags out of these. And I just glued this directly onto my square. Again, you can always go and take some foam squares and put one on top. I have my chocolate that's going to end up matching my paws. Actually, this will look really cute together. I think I made my square a little too big. I'm going to trim them up just a tad. Okay, he goes up on foam squares. 
And then uh, this is our Sticker King stickers. So if you happen to have one of the loved ones at home with the little uh, roses and hearts on it, you can absolutely use those. And like I said, I'll make sure that I get them in the rest of the kits. And if you've already gotten your kit, let us know. And when you order next, we'll just drop it in there for you. I think that this was one of the stickers that's actually in an Ashley bundle a couple of weeks ago because there was some Sticker King stickers. And I think that it's in that bundle. And there are a lot of them in there. Lots of little roses. They're very sweet. Okay, so we've just made our own little tag. You'll put your little heart right in the middle of it and it will shine up really nice. And you're just going to put this square down. And so here you can see I put my little flower and my little heart right there. So those are what you will put in its place. And isn't she just adorable? So, and I also have a rose up here. I forgot to say that. There's a rose there. And we need our gemstones. And truly, you can choose whatever color you want because we sent you with four different colors. Uh, the only thing that you cannot use is um, anything more than one of the gold ones because you need five of them for our skateboarding wiener dog. Other than that, you can choose whatever. And I think just because red is prominent, I think I'm going to stick with using the red. So off he goes. Where did go? Right here in her little flower. Oh, I see. Yep, just right there. So sweet. It really brings that little piece out. So lots of fun there, see? Okay, so there's card number two. We're not really flying in my opinion, but we're doing a good job. <laughs> Look, I'm complimenting myself. That's really bad. <laughs> no, not all. You're complimenting the group. <laughs> what a great job you guys are doing. <laughs> Okie dokie. So this little guy is our next card. He's our little dachshund. And that's the one that we have for this. The frame is actually just a tiny, tiny bit bigger than the card, but I really wanted to make this a DL. Really honestly, how else are you gonna get this frame on anything unless you get a seven by seven card or an eight by eight card. And I just felt like it was representative of a long skinny dog if you put him on a DL card. So we're gonna take him out. And let's see, clever sausage. Levi. Grandson. Okay. Good night, Levi. Thank you. It always helps when I, because I literally am focused on what I'm doing. So I usually do not look over at the TV unless it has to do with verifying that I'm still on screen because I do migrate. Uh, we've already covered that. I try and remember that if I don't move my chair, I'm less likely to migrate. So I, I in order to remember that part, I cross my ankles in front of me so, so I can't move so easy. <laughs> the things that you have to keep track of for this job. <laughs> it didn't just spell that out yeah, on the job properly. <laughs> no, I don't. Actually, there was nothing in the job description about having to be on camera, period. <laughs> Little clause she puts at the bottom of it. Alex, other duties as assigned. <laughs> Every boss has that. Of course. I had that for my 
from my daycare and preschool. Okie dokie. So we have on this side, we're going to put our flowers on this side. That's why I had you cut from the direction that you had it because we've got our little, um, our little tags and our little gems on the one side. And if you notice, one side is actually wider than the other, but you wouldn't naturally notice that because this fills that space quite a bit. So we're gonna take, put our little flower up in the corner, or I should say down in the corner. I'm just going to apologize to you guys. I keep finding my hair falling out everywhere. So <laughs> if you find my hair, please return it. I need as much of it as I can get. No, I keep losing my hair. So I have found that I actually have made my card and it's gotten caught in the tape and I have to get my hair out before I can keep going. <laughs> Because nobody wants hair in their gift. That would be gross. Okay, so here we go. See a little tiny peak of flowers right there. Okay, then we're just gonna take our frame and it's our regular frame where you take and build it from the, I build from the outside in. Um, it's funny, I, I, don't, I don't know that I recall where Debbie builds from. Um, I think that when you do a shaker card, you're doing a totally different type of a card with a frame. So you're doing things a little bit differently. But for my regular frames, I... No, she does the outside in. She does the outside in too? Yeah, because she's going to run a glue line right yep. around the inside of that frame. That's right. To glue the next My frame. frame's a bit bigger. Yes, it will be a little bit bigger, okay. but it will still fit in your envelope because it's only an eighth of an inch. Okay. So At I least that's what I tried to make sure that it did. <laughs> um, yeah, just the frame just is a little tiny bit wider. Yeah, but the extra part of the frame on the top of the card, on the fold side. The extra part of the frame? Well, the part that hangs over. Oh, box. yes. Yes. I knew what you meant, right? I was with you. <laughs> I just thought I'd cut mine wrong. Nope, nope. Okay. So when I did it, I centered it. I didn't just put it up at the top. Mine actually sits down a little bit on top and below. And just make sure that you keep enough space for your tag. So put that little tag approximately where you think that it should go. And if you want to, you can do it the other way and put your tag over here because this has a lot of floral on this side. So maybe you want it over here. I don't know. I'll do it opposite and see what I think. So the first one, I made this side bigger and this side a little bit smaller. And this time I'm doing it the opposite direction. Okay, now you're going to take your next portion of your frame and just glue that right in. It used to be, I think this is one of our older bottles, so it's sticking. No, it's a newer one, just must have left the lid off. That frame just helps you line it right up too so that you've got your glue where you need it. I'm gonna slide it in and this is how I do it. You get your two ends in and you push up at the top, drop it 
and then slide it down because if you don't, you're going to end up with glue showing on your frame. So you've got to start on one side and slide it in because if you don't, you'll find a lot of glue at the bottom side instead of the top side. If you're just trying to drop it in, you'll start sliding and it will get glue on each side. So that's how I do it. And then we're going to foam up the little dachshund in the middle. Foam them up. Yep. And we got to the technical part of the card. So now I get to finish my story about Shorty. So Shorty was a lot older. Uh, he was about 16 when we got our little penny dog. And he would pick her up at nighttime. And it didn't matter whether we were holding her or whether she was snuggled in with one of us or she was in her blanket because she was little. I mean, I'm not kidding you. She was this big from nose to tip and just tiny little thing. And, um, and little shorty, he would go and he would go get her when it was time for him to go to bed. He had decided he was just going to bed. And um, he had a nighttime schedule that was his, and you better not interrupt it. He was really getting to be an old man. Okay. So, but he would go and he would pick up Penny wherever she was at and drag her into bed with him. And he's small and he's short. And he, um, and he, Penny might have been small at this stage, but within just a few weeks, she got quite a bit bigger. It didn't matter. When it was time to go to bed, Shorty would go and she, he would take her by the nape of the neck and drag her across the floor to where he was sleeping and put her in his bed and curl up and keep her warm at night. <laughs> so he was, he was probably um, the sweetest dachshund that anybody could ever meet. And we called him the mama dog because that's exactly what he was. He was the mama dog. And I, and you know, we thought that we were gonna lose Shorty. We were pretty positive that little Shorty, he was 16. And the doctor, the vet didn't think that he was gonna make it through the next year. And, um, and he lived another two years and he played with Penny and he did all of this stuff with Penny. It was like, it made him a better, and healthier puppy because he had somebody to take care of. And I want, and I want to say that, um, that it was a big deal for him to have preschool and daycare because he really loved that taking care and being around the kids. And when I quit doing it and went back to school and changed my job profession, um, he missed having children around. And I think that that really changed his, his outlook. So, it's usually the other way around, isn't it? When yeah. you get an old dog and you get a puppy, they sort of give up. Yeah, possibly. I, yeah, mine's yeah. done that before now. 18 years old, little puppy. Oh, boy. And he was stubborn because dachshunds can be stubborn. And he was smart, but he was stubborn and an escape artist. I he will he was able to escape out of anything we couldn't seem to figure it out where did he go and how did he get out and we would go around and try and figure it out because he would just arrive at the front door he just he'd just leave out the back and trot right around to the front door <laughs> i had a sticker i had it for ages and it's actually on my desk now and it's this little dog running like heck hell of running like heck and all legs are off the floor and it says live life like the gates being left open <laughs> <laughs> it was really That's you know live life like the gates being left open yeah um so olaf is a poodle and a dachshund so he's got the stubborn and the smart from both the dachshund and the poodle because let's face it they're pretty smart and so he's got all the smartness and the escape gene. <laughs> I am. Okay. 
So I have just put up on my foamy squares my little circle that says sweet sausage, clever, clever sausage, which obviously we just discussed that they're very smart dogs. So they are definitely clever little sausages. And this is where I used my gold. If you guys want to grab into the blue or you want to do something different, you can, but I used the gold. He's got a style and skateboard going on here with gold little wheels. Oh, mine's got green wheels. Yours has green wheels? Yeah. <laughs> but he's got a gold medallion. He's blinging right along. Ooh, hey, on the, yeah. I know. That's a good decision. Bow. And I'm a red in the bow. Smart as a sausage thing. Yeah. So you're putting those on the wheels? I put or... them on the wheels. Uh -huh. And I put them on the bow. And then I put one on the top and one on the bottom. Um, I did not have this little roll at home. Um, but when I got in touch with Brittany, I said, hey, when you make these, could you <laughs> put the these little rolls in? Um, and they worked great. So you can then choose how you want that to go. Um, you can put one up here and one down at the bottom, or you can put it in your flowers. You've got a lot of bling going on here. Save your reds, but any of this can go anywhere you want it to go on your cards. So. It kind of works really well in some of these flowers because it gives them that golden yellow middles. I think you'll have a gold nose. I'm going to give him a gold nose. <laughs> so, and the green and the blue, I did not use at all. So you will have these, but if you chose to use them here, you totally can. So we're just going to bling them all up. I don't always get the sticky off. Yeah, you do have to have to pull it quite well yeah. um, to get them off. Just you can. A of green, of blue. <laughs> you can um, if you lose the sticky on the back. You can definitely use your glue. Susan's Susan's already ahead of me here. Yeah. Um, I the other way to do it so that you're not fighting with it. Um, I was just choosing for something that was time based. Uh, you can take and you can cut. So you can cut in between each of these and then they'll slide off a little bit easier. Oh, yeah. Good idea. Okay, okay he's done. He's beautiful. Carolyn does there you have go. her kid for the tea bag folding class on Saturday yet. Ah, uh, I do not believe so. Um, she yeah, um, Debbie, I pulled the stuff for her and she made them, um, Tuesday evening and into Wednesday. Um, and so I don't think that a kit itself has been made. Um, I can double check to see if the listing is up or not. Um, but between Debbie, me or Brittany, somebody will get that list and up and going for you. <laughs> and usually Debbie does most of the class listings because she wants to make sure she's got all the stuff in it. So there's our little hot dog. How are we doing on time since I can't see? <laughs> doing good. Okay. Okie dokie. So if you cut your cards earlier, you will have this one right here that is your five by five size. There you go, five by five. We're gonna put them right here like this. Okay, and I'm going to tell you that I made up this bow <laughs> on this little cute bow that we're making for this card. Ah, 
I love this bow. Um, yeah, I made it and I wasn't absolutely, I didn't follow a guide or I didn't have an idea from, from somewhere else. I just tend to play with things until I like what I see and then I use it. So I'm putting this card on its side, the fold going on here. Fold here. With the eye. Yep, yep, okay. perfect. So this way we're opening up our card this way instead of up and down. Okay, so I'm turning my card this way first, then putting it on. Anyways, I realized that uh, last night that I hadn't redone the bow and practiced it uh, before we came to today. So I practiced just a little tiny bit before we got on screen because that's all that I had time for. <laughs> and um, and so hopefully I'm going to be able to recreate this bow. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> um, I, I think that I was able to remember. Um, you may have to just because uh, if you do not have the blueberry, this is one of those bows that you're tying on and making two layers at the same time so that you're tying your bows in together, uh, which gives it its fill right here. So that's, that's what we're going for is getting those two done together at the same time. If for some reason, um, you don't have one of the blueberry middies um, that comes with the two pieces. And I'll show you what I'm talking about when I get ready to tie it. But, um, but what, what we do is we're tying it all at the same time. And if you don't have one of those, you can technically tie one bow and then tie the next one and sit it on top. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit, but it is a little bit harder. Okay. So I want the chocolate on the outside corner of the open card and the bottom. I mean, if you want it to open the same way that I am opening mine. Okay, so here it is when it's done. Okay, and I am going to take and um, I saved the middle piece of this tag. I'm going to pop it out here really quick. I saved this middle piece and instead of putting it in a third one, I'm using it for my little Rottweiler. I'm using it for my little Rottweiler tag that's little. So I'm creating a tag with this. So just set this part of it aside. And um, so you'll want the big frame and the little frame. Mm -hmm. I am the doggy. I am the doggy. Okay. And you'll want the thing that says no bones about it. You are the best. And I figured that this was very appropriate for this little puppy because he is all dressed up. And what I did as well with this card in the frame is, is that Part of the reason why I wanted you to make the corner the way you did was rather than centering it here like you normally would um, on the corner, you know, you might cut out and maybe cut some of this off and try and make it more central. Um, but instead, I'm using that to my advantage and I'm actually making it part of the picture by doing it that way. It's getting a reflection. So let's see. So see, if I use it and I put it into the center of my card because of the way that I cut it, I actually now have a frame for him that gives him that little bit of fanciness. And again, we're going to leave a little bit more space on this side than this side, which seems very odd because I really want to put it right smack in the middle. But because of that bow, we want the bow to be able to fit. And you might cover up part of the puppy if you don't leave your space a little bit more open. Um, and it should be closer to the top than it is to the bottom because we've got this bigger tag that goes down here. Okay. So what I did was I just foamed up the little frame.
Well, not the doggy. Yeah, well, not the doggy. And bear with me, folks, because I'm going to get a drink of water. My mouth is definitely drying out. Okay, so I over foam things. I think we've talked about this before. I over foam things. And so when I'm doing these cards, I feel like all I do is spend half of my time foaming card, taking the things off the little foamies. <laughs> it's a pretty big frame. Um, and because I'm not gonna have that middle frame, I just tend to want to support it a little bit better. Still have the next corner to go. Okay, so we're now just going to take that a little bit more space on the right and a little bit of space. You're going to move it at the top, so then that way we've got space for that. And um, I glued it on, I did not foam square it on. So it kind of will depend on you and what you like. You can absolutely put it up a little bit higher. Um, I like a layer or two or five. So it's totally up to you and how you wanna do it. And I put my little doggy on this one. I didn't put him up on foam squares. I just placed him down with some glue and put him on that way. Um, so again, it totally becomes an option. So I'm going to do it a little differently so that we can see what it looks like both ways. And so long as I don't use too many foamies, <laughs> I'll have enough for my Rottweiler. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing much better with the whole sticking to less foamies. <laughs> ah, I've got plenty. I will tell you the secret to being able to peel these things is having a nail. It's a good thing I quit biting my nails a while ago. It took 40 years approximately to break the habit. <laughs> Some are a slow learner. <laughs> uh, so I sucked my thumb for the first five and a half years of my life. Um, I might have possibly have sucked it a little bit longer than that, but I remember being about five and a half. Um, it was, I, for the most part, quit before I ended up in first grade because back then you weren't required to go to kindergarten. In fact, I think in Oregon State, you're not required to go to kindergarten. They don't consider it a, a problem. Uh, until they hit first grade. So, uh, okay, I'm going to make a little note here for you guys. I will interrupt my story. So I'm putting it into this little section um, because I want him, I want to have those bones as part of my frame. So I'm putting him all the way up in the top corner. Okay. Like that. And then we'll foam me up the little tag. And it's the no bones about it, you're the best. So I quit sucking my thumb because I was going to have to be in the first grade and I didn't want anybody to tease me. But I think I still sucked it at night. <laughs> <laughs> and so sucking of the thumb then became biting of the fingernails. <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, yeah, it was just one of those things. I wasn't a binky kid and my mom tried everything. She even put Tabasco sauce on my thumb. She, there was this stuff that was horrible tasting, horrible, that you put on nails and it dries on the nail and it it tastes awful. It, it's a bitter taste and it's a... I and got to like that. Did well, oh, so here's what I yeah I think that kids that are stubborn enough to suck their thumb uh just gonna say number one you're probably gonna be stubborn um the rest of your life uh <laughs> and the other part of that is is that um you uh you tend to come up with ideas that will help facilitate what you really want to have done in your life. Because I put it up on a frame, it works for putting in the middle foamy, but you're going to have to double foamy it um, on the corners because of the height of the foamy on the frame. kind of wondered if that might happen. <clears throat> so when it came time, I, I, I knew that it was coming. She'd come in with the little bottle of fingernail polish look and stuff and it was made specifically to get your kids to stop sucking their thumb and i would just put it in my mouth within a very short period of time when my mom wasn't looking and is she on right now i there aren't a lot of things <laughs> there aren't a lot of things that i remember about being a kid um correctly but one of the things that i do remember is the fact that um i would remember that i went and i and i thought okay she's not looking and i would just lick it all off because i just get through it so that i could get back to sucking my thumb or biting my nails or whatever that might be um and the things that go wrong with sucking your thumb is that you can catch a lot of different germs. <laughs> I had mono before I was two because <laughs> I would touch something on the at the store, like the shopping carts, and then I would put my thumb in my mouth. So my mom always walked around with wipes and she was constantly washing my hands. I'm sure that I gave her some angst for all of it. So sorry, mom but I really like sucking my thumb. <laughs> so maybe a slow learner, but I'm going to say probably more likely stubborn. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take my little red gems and I'm going to put them, since I've got several of them, I'm going to put one on our little dot up here on the top of our little sign tag. I put one here and I think that since I've got it, I might as well use it and I'm going to put one right, whoop, right here on the very top of his little hat too. And I encourage you to use tweezers. However, I did not use them. I made the decision I wasn't going to try and figure out where everything was at <laughs> in Debbie's space. Okay, so here is our little guy. And I totally switched him around, didn't I? Because I was going to have it open from the side. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. You can make it both the same way. <laughs> oh, okay. Five by five. Five by five lets you do it this way or this way. <laughs> this that way doesn't work so well. <laughs> um, the, this is what happens when I talk and work at the same time. Um, chewing gum is not an option for me anymore. Um, <laughs> Uh, so anyways, here is the tag and the, and the little doggy standing, uh, on the foamy versus not on the foamy. Um, I think that I like him not on the foamy, but that is, that is my opinion. 
and it's totally up to you. And now we're going to get to that bow. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. Again, let's see if I can replicate it. This could be a lot of fun, guys. We could be doing this all day. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so you're going to take your, your uh, little midi mini blueberry, and we're going to use both of them at the same time. Okay. Okay? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. First, just to make it easier, if you don't have them clipped together, take the first one off and set it aside. Give yourself a little bit of space down here. Let's slide it in. You, uh, I had an 18 inch piece for this and it was, it definitely gave me more than enough. Um, and I, uh, Brittany, I said, you can give 18 or you can do two. And I noticed in the packet list that as two feet. So you have plenty of extra to be able to do this. So our tines are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're gonna go right past one, two, three, four. So we're gonna move it to the fourth one. And whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So you should have three prongs that are sitting on the outside. And you're just gonna take it and put it in place. So we've just made a cross, an X like that. And this is what it should look like on the back. And you're gonna just set that aside. It locks in very nicely with these. So then you- the uh, put it across, Where? make an X, and then put it in the other side and lock it in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So now you're going to put this one up on top. And you're going to go one in from what you have. So if we did a four, we're going to go a three, two, three. Right? So here I've got this. Actually, no, I lied one two three four so this one is also a four but because it's a tinier little comb it doesn't have quite as much in it you're going to still be smaller than your red one that's behind it so put your black one in the top piece and you're going to do it just like you would with your normal three triple bow and just tuck that in and away in the second one, two, it, it locks it into place. Um, no, you put it through the top layer only. So you're gonna slide it in between the two. So it's a four. So it's a four. So you should have two prongs hanging out after one, two, three, four. One prong hanging out after of the little ones. Okay, so you're gonna put that in as a four, slide it in between. And if you have to, you can open them up just a little bit. It is a little bit of a trick for this first one. Once you get the first one down, it will become easier because after you hit that slide, so we're at four, right? Now you're gonna come in and you're gonna do three, but you're gonna put it through both. So right now you should only see your red back here because your black is in between the two. So you've put it forward first. How you doing? Not very well. Okay, let's, I'm gonna start it again with the black because I think that if, if, we've, if you've got the red locked in, right? So you've got both sides, you've got it locked in. You place if you're looking this at down. Your numbers, that doesn't fit. To look at your numbers, I've got to turn it over and then I'm not looking at any numbers. I didn't even know that this one has numbers. Are there numbers so they on fit these? In together. So they go here, so you do your four first and you put it just behind the front back one. So Susan, right here, you're gonna put it, cross it over just like you would make a four, three, four. I didn't have them locked in, that was the problem. And slide it. Yeah, you definitely have to lock them in or else it won't work. I couldn't see the numbers. So next you're going to do your three and you're going to go all the way through this time. So at this point you should have your red and now you have your black. Oh. And you're going to go to your three. With what color? 
with the black. Uh, that's not lining up largely in the back. It's not lining up in the back? Oh, that's because I didn't do it all the way through. Thank you, thank you. So, okay. So is that what it looks like now? Maybe. I think I'll just do two bows. <laughs> okay. So you've got it in the back. And now you're just going to take both of your bows, lock the red one in, do your four with your black. So we've done our four, three. Let's try that again. Four, three, and our last one is a four. There you go. Okay. And normally you would just go right up here to pull it down and through. But before we do that, we're going to slide our red one back out. You can hold it down here with your fingers. You're just going to slide this out and you're going to make it run right out on that side. So you're just lifting it up off the top of the latch and sliding it right in between the second and third post in the back. Then you're going to do the exact same thing over here. And it's now going to come forward. Tie in. And here's hoping I remembered right. Okay. So you go through, you slide them all down the middle. You cannot tie that last red one until we get it off of the black. So you have at least three that you can tie in together all at the same time. Okay, and my trick for the satin matters here, because it is a bulkier bow, um, you need that in order to hold everything in with the satin. And Susan said, you're using satin? You hate satin. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like satin. But this trick really helps satin a lot. <laughs> okay. If you need me to, which I'm more than happy to do, um, I've got a few different things that I need to finish for everyone uh, in regards to uh, the steam machine with the extra inspiration card um, last week's. And what I can do is I can make just three little videos over the next couple of weeks where we do the steam one, we do the one from last week with the decoupage with the extra layers, and um, we do a secondary one of these bows so that you can see what we're doing. So I've put my tape here, I've got my black and my red and now I still have to get this one tied around in the middle so what I have to do now is slide it out bring it up and over just like you would do bring it down and through the top and again you're just going to take your blacks and your reds and tie it one more time just so that you get the finished bow. So it's gonna be a little bulky back here, that's okay. It has the space to, to fill out here because of the frame being so high on its foamies. Okay, so take that last one, slide it out, lift up the little red one and just File it on through like you normally would by sticking it in the big hole, bringing it up and over, and then tying one last time. And from there, you will have a very cool little bow that will go in various directions. This, because of the, the weight, you have to really get it in and tug and pull. think that I might have locked it up a little bit. There's one pull. There's our other pull. Mm. 
so you then go through and you fan them out and what I did was is I put my bigger ones on the top and I just moved my smaller ones down to the bottom and then there's my little small guy he's way in there in the black and it just because you've done it at the same time you're literally building a bow that has different levels and layers so it gives you a totally different look than what you've seen in the past and he's definitely sliding a lot Mm -hmm. It's just getting all the little areas done. I think I taped too soon. Okay. Nope. I think by taping it when I did, I did it too soon. So bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of um, the cards. And then if you guys still want to see it, I can do it again because I totally made a mistake somewhere um, in it. And so I'm going to undo it and redo it. Um, so we'll just set that on to the side. And hopefully we'll be able to get that to work here in just a moment. And if it's something that you want to see, we'll do it again and hope that it works. Okay, we're going to grab our third of our A6s. You know, I'm sorry because it seems like when I am looking up that it there are several people that are not feeling very good and quite a few. and i'm sorry that that's happening and i hope that you have a way to feel a little bit better yeah, spend money spend money <laughs> is is that you feel better <laughs> sorry are you retail <laughs> therapy <laughs> definitely <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, <laughs> I love it. I probably do it a little bit too. Um, uh, so this last week, my husband is so excited. He, um, he's been complaining for a long time about hurting. He's been fairly sedentary, which uh, can be like him at times, but not to the extreme that he has been. And so I've been worried about him and he had to come to the decision to go and follow up with his doctor on his own. And um, this last three weeks, yeah, I'm going to say in this last three weeks since he saw the doctor, um, they found out that his, um, that his pituitary gland in his brain is not doing its job so he is a little bit more likely to get upset about the little things but not mean upset just it bothers him upset um and he has been uh he's sometimes he's happy sometimes he's really sad and so he's just been fluctuating for the last couple of years now. It's been it's been hard for him, and he hurts. Uh, 
Okay, guys, here's the last of the gold directions. I'm going to use it because that's what I've got in front of me. And he hurts. So there was a lot of different things. And he was trying to not go to the doctor because he was afraid that he was going to be diagnosed with diabetes too. And uh, he was right. And so now I'm airing this all out for all of you guys. Um, <laughs> he was he was right and I was right. He has been diagnosed with it, but it is related to the pituitary gland. It's not his thyroid, which we thought might be of issue too, but he has done a gambit of tests and a whole bunch of different things. And uh, the numbers aren't lying and he... He is, uh, he's just having troubles. And if he will stick with the medications that they give him and not do the diabetic piece of the shots and this and that instead, um, instead they're having him go through and uh, take a different medication. And he's not having to knock out all the sugars. He can have fruit, sugar, and um, starches and carbohydrates, but they have to be healthy. And he has to lose some weight. So he said, they said, the doctor said, that the losing of the weight could happen at the same, uh, that the losing of the weight will happen with the medication and changing the diet all on of its own. So three weeks ago, we started this. And uh, he started walking a mile a day, and he's now almost up to two miles, not a day, every other day. And he says how much different it feels for him. Uh, he's already got a positive attitude when he comes back and he's had his walk. It makes him happy because he's doing what he's supposed to do. Um, so here's my gold Miri. I don't know about you, but sometimes I end up with a little bit of a lip on mine. Um, you can fix it. You saw me do the last one where I fixed the card and I moved it up to straighten it out. But at this point in time, since my Miri is already on and I didn't check it, I'm just going to cut off my edge. Okie dokie. So we have our card. We're opening it this way. This time I'll get it right. I won't put it on sideways. I mean, right side up and upside down. So we're going to move our card that direction. And this is what he should look like when we're done. Okay. So here we go. You have your piece that you already cut. And I cannot tell you what. No, I can measure it. So just in case, we're going to remeasure here. He is five and a half, five and a quarter long by three and seven eighths. Five and a quarter by three and seven eighths. And that will give you a little bit of a bigger border on each side, a little bit smaller on the top and bottom. Um, and depending on which side you want your dog on, right, you can do it this direction or you can do it this direction and there isn't a right or wrong. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to do the opposite of what I did before because that makes this fun, don't you know? Okay. So I am putting this one straight down onto the Miri. I'm not going to foam it up though. Um, just because I already have a lot of foaming up that I'm doing around the Rottweiler frame that I created because I've got several different layers there. And so if I put this up on foam squares, it would be too thick to fit into the card. It would almost be like uh, decoupage thick. Okay, I'm doing something different than what Debbie does. Um, I found for the pickiness that I have, and I think that I've shown you guys this before, but just in case, maybe not. Um, if you are somebody that gets really picky, cause I never get mine straight. I just, 
I've got my tape flags, but it seems like I never get it completely straight. Um, so I kind of created something that was a little bit different of a tape flag, and I put just a little tiny bit in the middle so that we'll hold it into place and that will give me a little bit of movement going back and forth. And then I create my four tape flags by going all around the edges instead. So now I'm sealing down my card. I've got it here and I can place it exactly where I want it and just move in the middle. And so I know that I know that we could glue it and slide it around and clean up the glue. Um, but this will pop right back off again, just like this. And it doesn't harm anything so long as you do it quickly and you're not shoving down on it until you, um, until you decide that you want it. The craft style even works a little bit better than the hunky-dory for being able to lift already, as you know. And then this just does it even more. So now I can just pull all my tags and I'm done. And I've got it right where I want it anyways. And this tag got folded in, it looks like. I must not have gotten this corner down. Sorry, guys. Okay. I thought I had done all the corners. Just didn't fold it through enough. Okay. So that's how I do my tape flags when I want to put on a second layer and I want to keep it straight. Um, if you haven't done it that way before, that is quite all right. And you don't have to, but it is an option. Um, okay. So I have... On my piece of toppers that I have left, I've got the old chap, happy birthday. I've got my Rottweiler with his sunglasses. I don't know why, but this one has been tough to try and punch out. Maybe I'm getting weaker. <laughs> that must be it. That's gotta be it. Okay. All right, so in your pack of items, you should have your leftover, your leftover pieces of your cuts that we did. One of them is going to be this little piece right here, and I'd already cut it out. Um, it is, and I think that I already gave you the cut outs, um, pieces, the measurements on this, but it's two and an eighth by two. Because Which the, is the bigger? Uh, you're going to cut, you're using the whole uh, chocolate side. So the chocolate side, you're going to use the whole thing. You'll just have a little border if you set it on its side. Yep, two. Two by two and an eighth. Two and an eighth is long this way, Susan. So your two is long this way, and the two and an eighth. Okay. And we are going to be making an actual little frame with our suede. And our suede is, I believe, three by three. I can double check it. But basically, you just want it to match up with this and if you want the velveteen is is uh, very pliable so when you're trying to build up this frame it really becomes whether you feel comfortable with it being a little floppy it does seal itself down and makes a great a great frame when you're done but if you're not sure that you like that you can always use one of your extra card blanks or card pieces um, and just attach this to it and then cut it out so that you've got a little bit stronger. In fact, we were talking about that earlier. And Susan said that she accidentally 
cut the edge off of her fold and I said I would trade her. Now, of course, I'm not sure where I put them. Right here, looky there. So I can use one of these and I can put this on here with some tape and cut it out. And then I have a little bit more strength and durability. So I am gonna do that this time, just so that you can see it being done. but you do not have to. Oh, wow. Okay. It's a piece of tape that's doing stuck to the top instead of the bottom. That's kind of interesting. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of tape on each end. I don't need tons because I'm gonna put the frame right over the top. Did you see what's happening with it? No, I'm laughing at Mary Lynn's comment. She says, they say I'm in the golden years, but I'm pretty sure I'm in the iron age and I'm rusting. <laughs> <laughs> and that says good night. Good night, Annette. I hope you feel better. Because I caught that you were one of the people that's not feeling so good. So hope you feel better. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this and use it to give it a little bit more support, but you do not have to. You can do it without, but I just wanted to do it this way. And to be honest with you, I the reason why I'm doing this is, is that I found that it goes a little faster by having a little bit of the extra support. And since I'm on a time crunch, get it done. Get it done. Get her done. Okay, you're going to foam up your frame. Foamies. I love them, but I don't like them. Yeah, but I love hate relationships. <laughs> Truly, I love hate relationships. Uh, yes, do not forget about coming in. Thank you, Annette, because that helps me remember. Uh, do not forget that tomorrow evening, Debbie is going to be doing the same thing for spring and Easter time that she did for Valentine's um, to be able to show you some of the items that are in the store that are Easter and spring type items. Even if you do not do Easter, um, you'll have lots of fun looking at all the different things that are springy. I love springtime. I'm just lining that up with my little mat, just like that. I'm going to take and put down my um, little dog space. It doesn't have to go any particular place. It's totally up to you. But we're just going to keep building up this frame and this tag a little bit more and a little bit more. So I want my this part of it glued down. Um, I don't think I'm going to use the tape. So this is our little piece that we just cut off the end of our extra leftover pieces. And this part I'm gluing down because I'm putting it on the velveteen and it velveteen likes the tape uh, on the bottom, but I have found that I get a better result if I use glue on the top. 
That might not be everybody's experience, but it is mine. Okay. My foamy's trying to stick to the base. Maybe I don't try building it right there. <laughs> I go then take my border that I have left, not left over. We haven't used this one at all. Um, we're going to use it right now in two different spaces. So one is, is that I'm sliding it through from right here in the frame. I'm just lifting up my foamy that goes through the middle underneath that bone. And I just put it straight on. See that? I just line it up with my little bones. So I'm making my own little topper frame. So now we've done two of those making your little own toppers out of your little pieces, bits and pieces. So we've done two of those today. <clears throat> Apparently my brain was thinking that that was necessary. <laughs> so I didn't even realize that I'd done it twice till just now. That's bad. <laughs> I have to say that I'm super excited because I actually think, and I've been saying this now for a while, but it has taken me a while to do it because I'm doing it in my free time, which has not been much free time. I think that I'm actually going to have my craft room completed. Mm -hmm. So I think by Sunday, that's my hope that it will be done. Sunday evening. That's my goal. And everything will be unpacked and everything will be where it's supposed to be. And... Uh -uh. Sorry. You can't. You Does can't. that ever? <laughs> no. I am very close, guys. I am telling you. I am very, very close. You just finish that and bring those talents over here. Get to work. Well, <laughs> I am. I'm working around here a lot about <laughs> listing all the stuff that came from the pod. Yeah. So if you saw last night for Wednesday on your What's New Wednesday, you will have find that on the days that I am working, that I am trying to go through the boxes that we have in here so that we can get the boxes out of here <laughs> so that I can get this place back into shop shape and <clears throat> tip top shape. Okay. So I have now created my own little topper with my frame, my suede, a section of my um, little end piece over here. And then I've used my border as well. And then we put a little dog up on foamies. So we have one, two, three, four. We technically have five layers. And that's why I didn't want to use foam on the back of the um, suede, velveteen suede. I don't know what's up with that, but it's backwards. Look, see, it's sticky on the outside. Isn't that weird? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I broke it. <laughs> eh, I'm used to it by now. <laughs> Something odd always has to happen. Or else it wouldn't be any fun, right? That's right. Uh, I am not teaching a class. Oh, you are, I hear. Betty, am I reading it right? You're teaching a class on Saturday? Yeah. Good. Now, weren't you doing one last week as well? All right. So I'm putting him right over here on this bit of brown, and he is good to go. And then I'm going to clip my border. Actually, I think I'm going to tape my border. Piece. Make my little strip here on the side. Oops. 
I'm trying to center it and not pay attention to the bones. So I'm centering on just the chocolate um, color and not the bone color. Because I feel like when I'm looking at it that, um, that the bones just kind of make a secondary border. So now we've got two borders along the edge. Oh, I'm so glad that I put that on the right way. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, chewing gum and walking at the same time, it's not a good, not a good look for me. Not a good look. Okie dokie. And then this little guy gets foam squares. So as you can see with my foam happiness, I have created... I have this many foamies left. So if you are a foamy enjoyer like I am, of at least putting them on, you'll have a little bit left over. Even for those that are as crazy as I am to put so much on one. <laughs> okay, what time is it, Bryce? Oh, it's 6.11. Okay, that is good. I am going to say that I am going to work on the bow a little bit more and reteach it on a video or if I'm here next, not if I'm here next Thursday, or if we haven't gotten the video up for that bow, um, we'll do it next week and you guys can see it again. So I think I just need to re-repractice because I didn't tie something right and it's literally starting to unravel as it sits there. Of course it is satin. So that's part of it. But this is our last little card and um, we have our gems and I used all of the gold on the uh, on the little dachshund one, but I've got some red left, and I think the red would look really nice on his glasses. Whoop, unless you lose it. Just like Okay, I'm going to show you uh, Debbie's little um, tea bag fold flowers. Um, we were really excited when we saw these and they are really neat, especially when you start working with them in different ways. Uh, and you'll be able to see the first basic ones. Um, and I am sure that she's going to also at some point do the ones with a stamp on them because they do uh, have stamps that match in the different shapes. And so um, it's a lot of fun if you can do that with both. Okay, clean up my mess a little bit here. Alrighty, we've got this little guy with his little sunglass gems. I changed it up by putting this things on the opposite side in case you like one side better than the other. Everybody has a preference, I'm sure. He definitely needs his little bow, this little guy. He definitely needs his little bow. So Susan said I could just say, and magically, here's the bow. I made before. <laughs> I made before. But um, I will definitely get that out to you guys. Um, then we have our little we have our little wiener dog. And we have our little birthday dog. Not birthday dog, just our little heart. Heart and Rose sticker dog. If you have a tag that you would like to use for her, you are always welcome to use that. And then we have a happy birthday 
that should go on there. So it looks like we missed a couple of things this week and I'm really sorry about that. It was a very quick put together. Um, and so hopefully we will have it a little bit more organized next week for you. But we will make it right and get you those stickers and the bow. So I wanna make sure that you have that opportunity. Okay. So this is what Debbie is working on for Saturday. And this is two different types of ways to do um, it. This one is called a pleat, <clears throat> a pleat tea bag fold um, because it's a petal. So it's a pleat petal, I think. Um, I don't wanna misstate it, but I believe that it is called a petal. Um, this one, because we've got a circle one and a square one, and there's another one. And this has layers of different papers that you can use to create these 3D flowers. And I will say that, um, that these look, you've got all the different prints within it. They're not all the same. So each one has a little bit of each different kind of print in here. So this one has some gingham. This one has some gingham print. And it has the pink doily print on the top. But it also has our blush butterflies. Um, this is done with hunky-dory paper. So look. They're hiding in little precious places, aren't they? And you fold them up in a tea bag fold. Um, it is a die so that you're not having to cut each of these out to try and determine this, this print right here, uh, or I should say this shape. This shape is, is cut out with your die. And then from there, you build up and you make these great 3D pleats um, with all of its different papers that you can he can see. Look at this one. Look at that. So they're really, really beautiful. This one is done with a heavier paper, and so you can build it up higher. This gives it a really interesting look um, because of the ways in which she folded them differently than she folded these. So it's the exact same. See the back? It is the exact same um, petal pleat that she has on the back which is also the same die that she cut, but she gets two different looks based on how she chooses to fold them. So these are what you guys will be making on Saturday. They'll be so much fun. And I hope that you enjoy them. Um, I am not sure what's happening on Thursday. I don't think we have Thursday next week up and ready. Um, and I apologize. I know that we have been working hard at trying to make sure that we're keeping up with the fact that uh, with Debbie's mom being uh, in surgery and Debbie taking care of her. And then it is tax time, folks. So I always know at tax time, I'm a little bit busier around here. <laughs> so so um, it might be possible that you might be seeing me a few more times in the next few Thursdays. Um, We'll see what happens. So <laughs> have a good rest of your week, guys. Enjoy tomorrow and come back and visit us not only for the Saturday class at 2 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, but tomorrow evening we will be doing the Spring and Easter Time video, and it starts at 4 o'clock. So same as today. All righty, guys. If there aren't any questions, I'm going to say bye and thank you for joining us again this week.